Well, there's going to be a lot of people in Scotland uh, getting anxious in a couple of weeks' time because mm -hmm. schools are back. Uh, the Prime Minister saying it's our moral duty to get children back to school next month all over uh, the country. OK, so pupils are returning to the classroom. What does all of that mean? Scotland's largest teaching union is warning that it could lead to resurgence of coronavirus cases. And as parents... Are you worried? Larry Flanagan is the General Secretary of the Educational Institute of Scotland, speaking to Larry shortly. Uh, Dr. Sarah is here in the studio to talk about the health risks. But before that, Afia Adom has headed to Cowdenbeath Primary School in Fife to see how they are preparing. Afia, good morning. Good morning, Eamon and Ruth. That's right, I'm back in my homeland. I'm on the East Coast, not the West Coast where I was born, but that's right. I'm here in Fife. I'm at Cowdenbeath Primary School with the headmistress, Karen Rennie. Karen, thank you so morning. much for having us here today. You have been out of school for five months since the 18th of March, back to school this week. How are you feeling? Really excited. We have our staff team together today for the very first time. So it's wonderful to have everybody back together again. And we are just looking forward to getting our children back together on Wednesday. Tell me, you must have had to put quite a few safety measures in place. Tell me about them. So, yes, yeah, so we followed the Scottish Government advice to update our risk assessments. We have quite a robust risk assessment in place, which is based on the scientific and public health advice. We have enhanced cleaning. We've had a deep clean in school last week and there will be enhanced cleaning throughout the day of commonly touched surfaces such as tables and, and door handles. Hand washing is going to be really important so children will be washing their hands regularly throughout the day. That's not unusual. We do that in school anyway but probably the biggest change will be when they first come into school in the morning they will be washing their hands. Um, children are not required to distance from each other but we will operate where we can limit children's contact as much as possible. So we do have zones in our playground um, and we will stagger lunch times um, for children too. And it's not just about safety measures in the classroom. It's about getting kids back, socialising and getting your school community back together. How are you going to do that? That's really important for us. And that's something that we talked a lot about with staff before the summer. My staff have continued to complete professional learning throughout the summer about how they can support children's well-being in particular and re rebuilding our community. Reconnecting with the children and supporting the children to reconnect with each other is our focus when children come back. Yes, safety is important and we will abide by that. We will follow our risk assessments to ensure the safety of everybody, but reconnecting and with our children is going to be important. I'm sure there's loads of parents and guardians and children themselves up and down the country that are anxious about going back to school, going back into a school setting. What are you doing to alleviate the fears of parents and guardians and pupils alike? Anxiety is natural. We expect it. Um, children have been out of school, as you say, for some months. So we are expecting there to be some anxiety, but we're planning for that and we're preparing so that we can support that. We will be making ourselves available to parents to discuss where there are individual anxieties. We will be meeting and talking. And I think that's really important, communication going forward between staff and children, between us and families. And that rebuilding of our school community is going to be really important. And we will be doing our very best to mitigate where there are anxieties at home. There's been criticisms from some unions that it's too soon for our children to be going back to school. What would you say to that? Again, it's natural. Staff have been out of their school and their workplace for some time. Um, I'll be spending time with my staff today to go through the risk assessments and reassuring sharing them that there, we do have appropriate safety measures in place. I feel it's robust. I feel it's appropriate for a school. And again, as I said, teamwork and communication is really important as we go forward. We'll continue to work with our unions and where there are concerns, it is my priority and it will be our priority to ensure that we address them. Thank you so much, Karen, and good luck with Back You're to welcome. School this week. Thank you. Thanks to Karen there and back to Eamon and Ruth in the studio. And Afia, we just want to know from Karen there, is, is Karen happy with the safety guidance issued by the Scottish Government? Um, Karen, are you happy with the safety guidance that has been issued by the Scottish Government? Do you feel that it's been adequate? 
Yes, I do. I feel it's robust. I think we, we do plan to review that regularly and we will continue to look at it. We have, as I said, we do have enhanced safety and guidance and, and procedures in place in school. That is going to be a, a focus and a priority for us. I do want to though also reassure parents that our school will still look like a school. We, we intend to, and it is our absolute intention to ensure that our school is a safe, warm, happy and nurturing environment for our children to come back to. Yeah. OK, thank, thank you. Thank you, Fia. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for thank that. You. Let's, thank you. Let's bring in Larry Flanagan. We said he's the General Secretary of the Educational Institute of Scotland. Uh, Mr Flanagan, good morning. And we're saying that the morning. Scottish Government has set out guidelines. Uh, what do you and the Institute make of the guidelines? Are you happy with them? Well, we were part of the group that developed the guidelines. So in as far as they go, um, they do offer some very robust guidance, uh, as Karen was referring to there, around daytime hygiene regimes, for example, and uh, enhanced cleaning. Uh, where our members have concerns is perhaps the areas that the guidance doesn't, doesn't cover. So in the guidance, there's an exhortation to physically distance wherever possible. Um, but the reality is, if all pupils are back, that will be very difficult. So one of the areas that our members in a, a recent survey um, have indicated the like further advice on is the use of face coverings um, for pupils, uh, particularly older pupils, 16, 17, 18 year old, uh, where outside of school they are required to wear face coverings on buses, in shops, uh, in museums, um, but inside of school it's left to personal choice. So that's an area we're exploring further. And would you, uh, and would, you would you be suggesting that they wear those face masks all day for the whole school day when they're inside the school building and in the playground? Well, the, the guidance at the moment um, is that face coverings can be worn if a teacher or pupil wishes to wear them. Um, and we are concerned that for older pupils where the the risk of students passing the virus on to other students um, is uh, more real than perhaps for younger pupils, that the absence of physical distancing is, is a risk. Um, so we think in some circumstances, if you have 30 to 35 uh, young adults and teachers in a enclosed classroom, then face coverings might well be the best way to ensure safety. So that is an area we're looking at. Um, outside of the classroom, Pupils have to abide by the public health guidance around wearing their face coverings and shorts, for example. Larry, um, so Larry, we would like consistency between inside of school and outside of school. Larry, we're, we're, we're all talking about this as if it's a, you know, a shoe and everybody will turn up, everybody will go back. Um, what do you think the take-up of places will actually be? Well, interestingly, in, in our survey, two-thirds of our members support the decision to reopen schools although only one in five are expressing confidence in the safety measures. And I think you would probably find amongst parents and even amongst uh, a number of pupils that there is general support for the schools reopening, but still a lot of anxiety. Um, and I know that, for example, a lot of older pupils who live with perhaps elderly relatives uh, in their household are concerned about catching the virus and taking it back into the home. So I think um, I wouldn't be surprised if we actually see a number of parents keeping their children home until we see how things develop. Um, and it's a phased return over a week. So I think, um, as Karen was saying in your uh, earlier piece, um, if staff are raising issues or parents are raising issues, then we would want to address them because we all recognise the importance of young people being back in school. Um, and in Scotland at the moment, the virus is largely suppressed. So that's a positive environment. Um, but we have to make sure that we can maintain safety across the full school year. Um, so that staff and pupils can be confident uh, uh, that they're in a secure environment. Larry, I'd just like to get a, a medical perspective on things from, from Dr Sarah, who's been listening to what you had to say. And one of the things Larry said there was that only 20%, one in five of his, um, his membership there, had confidence in the safety measures. And there's a full list here of the Scottish Government's guidance um, on things, which I know you've read through. What would you like to say to Larry about that? Well, I completely understand the anxieties around it. It's been five months, understandable, but we have to look at the science. So we know from a big study done by UCL in May, children are 50% less likely to catch coronavirus. And when they do, the symptoms are very mild in the majority of cases. 
But what's even more interesting is a new pre preliminary study done by Public Health England has suggested that actually transmission is very minimal and should pose little to no risk. So if you were a teacher and not a doctor, you would be happy enough to, under this sort of guidance, to be in there teaching in the classroom? Personally, yes. I, uh, you know, I, I, as a doctor, I'm already, you know, face to face with a lot of patients. But I think as a teacher, when you're with people that are very you know, unlikely to pass it on to you, I'm not worried about the children. I think it's within the staff rooms that teachers need to be careful because it's more likely mm. adults to adults that are going to pass it yeah. to each other. Would you um, do you agree that then that children should wear masks? Um, I think it's got to be one of those um, voluntary types of things. Um, certainly the younger children probably don't understand the necessity not to touch the face and it's very difficult. It's difficult for us to understand that. Um, so I think it would have to be the older students who are probably more likely to want to wear one anyway once they've thought it through. Yeah. And Larry, the first few weeks of, of getting back to school are going to be the important weeks, the first sort of four weeks um, and, and beyond that because then we're going to find out you know, what are, if any, flaws in the whole system, I suppose. But, but after that, if it all goes well, it's right from the start, then we should be able to roll out the, the whole system and, and everything back to normal. Well, I don't think um, things will go back to normal. Um, the, once we get the schools physically reopened, there is perhaps an even bigger challenge, which is addressing the impact of lockdown on young people because that will have been a traumatic experience for um, most of them. And schools will have to focus very much on the well-being um, of our, our youngsters, um, primarily because it will be a challenge for young people going back into schools. Um, and, and I do accept the point that um, there is mixed evidence around um, the risk uh, from young people in terms of spreading the infection. But of course, schools have been closed for five months, so a lot of these studies haven't been on um, you know, fully functioning schools. Uh, so we do need to keep on top of this as we go forward okay. um, because we want schools to be safe environments for everyone involved in it and we want parents to have confidence. So addressing the mitigations that are required as far as we can will build that confidence level and then schools can focus on you know, the real purpose, which is the education, support and well-being of our, our youngsters. Good man, Larry. Okay. Thank you. Got to leave it there. Larry Flanagan is the General Secretary of the Educational Institute of Scotland. Dr. Sarah, to parents who are listening to that, to parents who are worried, they're saying they send their kids out to school. Will they be looked after in school? What are the, what are the measures, what are the, what are the basic things when kids come back from school, when they go to school, when they come back to school, to keep households safe? Of course, so it's always about hand hygiene. Make sure that the minute you step in that house, you are washing your hands and you're not touching anything else. Do remember that the risks are very low within schools and I think the risks of not sending your child to school are probably more considerate. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You very much. Thank you both.